Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited because I am going to try Roman Schmall paints, Roman Schmall watercolours for the very first time. Um, in previous videos I'm sure that I've mentioned to you that through the many years I've been using watercolours I have been mainly using two brands. Uh, one, uh, one brand is Daniel Smith and the other brand is Windsor & Newton. Um, I did this because for me they were a safe bet and um, I was on a budget and I was always looking for something to buy that I knew would work, that I was absolutely sure would work. So I, I stuck to the usual suspects which were Daniel Smith and Winslow and Newton. But I have been longing to try different um, watercolour brands. And uh, having tried Zeki, um, I just realised how much I wanted to try even more. <laughs> um, so trying Roman Schmall watercolours is, is a big deal for me. I'm probably very late to the party, but... Um, I'm going to swatch these colours with you and tell you what I think of them. I bought 13 colours. Now, I don't know why I bought 13 colours. I thought I was buying 12, but it seems that I ordered 13. I must have added one at the end um, without thinking. So I've done two swatch cards. One, a big one, which I have here. Oh, the other one. It's a smaller one, which I have here. So I'm going to have 10 on this swatch card and three on this. It's very cold here today. Oh, I had to turn the air con off, though, because the air conditioning off, because it made so much noise when I made a video for my patrons that I thought, no, I, I cannot have it on when I am videoing. So I put my extra woolly jumper on and hoping for the best. <laughs> now, these colours, these very much more colours come in this lovely little pack, which I really appreciate because they have the actual swatch of the colour on top of the half pan. And they have in clear, um, in, in larger writing than usual, um, what the pigments are. Um, I'll just open one for you so that you can see how they are packed and the rest I will do off camera. I'm not doing a very good job. Maybe I should have pushed this like that. Yeah. Just push that off. There we go. Mm, buff titanium. I'll put this to one side. So I don't know if that comes out I wonder if it comes out so that you can actually um, have it as a reference. I don't know. I'll have to investigate later. So I'm going to um, take all the colours out of their packing and put them in this little um, Jackson's watercolour, empty watercolour palette that I bought. And I will be right back. So I've stopped my um, unpacking of the watercolours because something happened and I just wanted to point it out to you. So I have my deep green gold here and I pushed it out using my finger to push it through to basically cut the seal, to break through the seal. And this happened. Half of the paint, or not half of the paint, that's an exaggeration, but a lot of the paint came off on the top when I pulled them apart. And this didn't only happen to this colour, it happened also to the Cherry Quinacridone Red. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it on camera. I'm going to put this away. This I can salvage. I'll just scrape it off and add it to my half pans afterwards. But I 
think it would be wise to just go with a cutter, not push the, the colour through and just cut it out instead like I'm doing here and let it fall out. Maybe that's why the number's on the back as well. Okay, come on. Uh-huh. I still need to, to push it a little bit, but I think I've got it, yes. So don't do the silly thing I did, which was to push it through pushing it through the uh, blister pack because it seems that it's not made to, well, it's not created to be unpacked like that. So um, I'm going to continue adding the colors and I'll be back. So I haven't packed them all without any more um, problems, thankfully. <laughs> I will be scraping the, uh, the paint that came off and putting it back into these little half pans. So after that little um, ramble, I am going to begin swatching <laughs> the, the, the most exciting part of the video. So I'm going to put this to one side. As always, I've done my little swatching card. I'll just move it to that one side, make sure it's in focus. There we go. And begin swatching. I'll be swatching as usual in mass tone and diluted. So here goes. I'm using my Da Vinci number no. two brush. I've pre wetted the paints a little bit and I'm going to begin with buff titanium, which is brilliant as a mixer. As far as I know, using the Daniel Smith color. Oh, that's nice. Colour. It's nice and creamy. And this is PW six um, six one, and now diluted. I think PW six is titanium white. Oh, that's nice. That's really delicate. I like that. I think I may be wrong, but I think this is a little less grey than my um, Daniel Smith version. It's a little more, um, I don't know, it's a bit warmer, I think. Next one is Naples Yellow another color I use for mixing and for my artwork a lot. This is a different mix than other na the other Naples yellow mm -mm, Naples yellows <laughs> I have used in the past. Oh that's nice. Oh it's a bit darker. It's a bit darker. I think it has probably more PBR24 in it. This is a mix. This is PW6 titanium white. Um, PY53, which is, is it nickel titanate? And um, PBR24, which is the genuine Naples yellow, which is quite dark. I've tried that. It's a quite um, dark color. That's nice. I like that. I think the Windsor and Newton one I use is more yellow, and I think I'll have to compare them. I think this might be something that I use if I don't want an Naples yellow that is really yellowy, like yolk yellow almost. The next colour I am going to swatch is 
Aquarius yellow. Now this is PY168. Um, is it? I mean, I'm going to hazard a guess here because I couldn't find it. I looked and looked and couldn't find it. Is it Azo yellow? Whoa, that is very citrusy. Very citrusy, leaning towards green. This I purchased because I wanted a nice bright yellow for mixing. I will definitely not be using this as is. It's too loud for me. It's too um, in your face. Um, but for mixing, mixing like nice happy greens, for instance, or really bright oranges, it will come in useful. So I broke my uh, rule where I purchase basically I purchase a color that is really nice it looks nice standalone but it's also good in mixing this one I wouldn't use in standalone maybe diluted really heavily diluted like for a very very pale light um, delicate yellow um, I might use it the next one is one I am really excited about. It is Nickel Azo Yellow and a lovely viewer. Um, I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name of the viewer that recommended this. Recommended it to me, not the Roman Schmall, I think. I think just in general to try out the Nickel Azo Yellow. Um, and I looked it up. And after I looked it up, I thought that is going to be so good for mixing. Wow. Oh, that's almost like a quinacridone gold. Wow. Oh, I can see many greens being mixed with this. That is nice. Again, a colour maybe that I won't use alone, but I will use for mixing other colours. Mainly greens, I think. It just looks like it has the potential to mix really, really nice greens. Maybe I should have diluted that a little bit more. It's a bit too mass tone. My next colour is something that I use a lot. It is PY129, which is um, copper azomethene green, and it is green gold. It is deep green gold. It, the name on the um, Roman Schmall uh, half pan is deep green gold, but I know it as green gold, and it is a colour, another colour that I use a lot for mixing greens. And some really pretty oranges. That is, oh, that's nice. That is really nice. But I've, I've used this color so much. It is true to the color, I mean, yeah, it's exactly what I would expect. Oh, sorry, my doggies, I've seen something in the garden. They're barking. They should be inside, it's so cold outside. There we go. Nice. My next color is another color that was recommended by a lovely viewer. Um, it is quinacridone, it is called, no, sorry, cherry quinacridone red. And I'll just switch my water here. And it is, from what I've seen, very similar, or basically the same as my beloved quinacridone coral. Oh my goodness, that looks lovely. 
Oh, yes. Oh, that is pretty. I got I love this color so much. Oh, that is so pretty. That is stunning. That is so, so pretty. Oh, wait for the color to dry. Don't get too excited. <laughs> but I doubt that it's going to lose any of its vibrancy. Yes, it's a quinacridone. Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh, I love that colour. Okay. That is so, so pretty. Okay. Um, <laughs> next, I um, I will be swatching quinacridone. Cannot say the word quinacridone red. And this is a cool red. Well, it should be a cool red. Oh, I like this. It's PV19. And just pick up a little bit more. As you can see, I've been try. I well, when I selected the colors, I tried to select colors that I would use to build a standalone palette. So I've got a cool yellow, warm yellow. Greens I didn't get because I'm hoping to mix my greens with the Azo yellow, the nickel Azo yellow, the deep green gold. Um, I got a warm red and a cool red. So I would say this is more leaning towards a middle red. But no, 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 I can see can see the corners better when it's um, diluted. Yeah. I will be adding to this palette and I am I will be so grateful if you can suggest colors that you think um, I may like or that you enjoyed uh, from Roman Schmall because so far what I'm seeing I'm really liking them. Um, and I would like to make a complete palette. Um, next, I have Cobalt Sea Blue. Now this is a peculiar colour for me because it is PB28. And PB28 is Cobalt Blue, which is like a middle blue. It's um, kind of between... Uh, it could uh, cobalt blue usually tends to lean towards warm but it can be also a middle blue and this is not at all what I expected <laughs> when I saw the name and this is a beautiful beautiful turquoise color and I don't think I've seen another brand do this with PB28. I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, please point me in the right direction so I can educate myself. Oh, contaminated it a little bit there. I'm going to pick it from here. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. I assume this is going to granulate as it's a cobalt. Oh, that is so pretty. Oh, that is really, really pretty. Oh, I, I'm loving the granulation. Oh, I love this colour. Okay. <laughs> Next, I have Ultramarine Intense. Now, there were various ultramarines that I could pick from but I chose this one because I do love an intense ultramarine I do love a really vibrant ultramarine although I like my muted colors I do like a nice vibrant ultramarine so when I saw it I thought hmm I must try it 
Oh, that looks lovely. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it has the intensity of a phthalo. Wow. Oh, I can just see this mixing some really pretty, pretty greens. Oh, wonky, wonky circle. It's just. Oh, that is beautiful. It's not as violety as the Zeki one, I think, which I love. I absolutely love that color. It's more. Well, it's less, less warm. And of course, it's PB29. Indigo is next, and this is a hue. It is not a true indigo, and this is why I bought it. It is a hue. Um, pure indigos, I, I'm saying, sorry, not pure. Genuine indigos are usually fugitive, so um, I wanted a color that resembled indigo, but was um, more light fast. And this is a mix of PB60, which I believe is Indunthrone Blue, and PBK7, which is Carbon Black. Oh, that's nice and moody. It's a moody, moody colour. I expect this to lighten a lot. When it dries so um, I'm holding my excitement because I love this color but because of the PB60 I do expect it to lighten okay and here I go with the diluted Oh, that's so pretty. That is so pretty. I'm going to wait until they have dried um, to comment. Have these dried? Mm, not so much. I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to wait a little bit before I do the swatches on this. So I'll be right back. Wait for those to dry. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to swatch the last three now. Um, I chose amongst the many variations of burnt sienna that I saw, <laughs> the burnt sienna Monte Amiata. Um, it's PBR7. Oh, this is a little bit difficult to lift. I did even wet it before. I think I've lifted enough. And this is very, oh, that is very earthy. That's a very earthy burnt sienna. I like my burnt siennas a little bit more orangey, but I will have to experiment with this. Can imagine that making really nice greys um, and diluted diluted is nice very earthy so many variations of burnt sienna you get the redder, the or more orange, the more middle. This is the more middle, I would say. I would say it almost has a yellow undertone. Okay, next is Quinacridone Maroon, which is PR206. 
Um, oh, that is, oh, that is beautiful. Oh, that is so pretty. It is softer than I expected. It has a softer appearance. The PR206 that I have, um, the Daniel Smith. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. I can see the colour. Um, it's more intense. This is more delicate. And diluted. Is, is so pretty. Okay, I'll wait for them to dry. Now the next one and the last one is sepia. Which again, I use a lot. Well, I use Van Dyke Brown now, but I do use sepia as well. So, oh, that's nice. That is nice. Wonderful El granulate at all. Have some white specks it's from the, the paper. And the sizing of the paper, not the paint. Yeah, the sizing is a little bit off this bit of piece of paper. That's nice. It's very neutral. It does shift. I think it has a shift towards yellow. I think. The Van Dyke Brown, the uh, Schmincke Horridan one I use. Okay, so those are all my colours. Um, I'd like to talk about them a little bit before I end the video. I'll move this out of the way, give it all the light that I can possibly can on this very gloomy day. Um, so the buff titanium is quite similar to the Daniel Smith. I think when I was applying it, it looked less gray, but now that it's dried, yeah, I can see it graying a little bit, which it would do, um, but it's very pretty and definitely um, one that I will be using alongside the Daniel Smith one. Naples yellow is less yellow than I would expect from a Naples yellow because I am used to the Winsor & Newton one which is quite yellow. It's um, it's quite intense but I like it. It's it's very understated. Um, mass tone it looks quite dull but when it's diluted it has that leaves the white of the paper to shine through and it it's very, very delicate and very pretty. The Aquarius yellow, um, looking at it hurts my eyes. <laughs> it is very, very vibrant and even diluted is very vibrant, but I will be using it for mixes. The Nickel Azo yellow, I, I am very, very excited to try mixing greens with this. I can I can see the potential and um, it just if I went into a store and they showed me yellows and they said pick one to mix greens with I think this would be the one because it's transparent and it gives I think as one of my viewers said it glows it gives a glow to colors and I can see that um, so 
deep green gold is green gold. It is PY129. It, it is a brilliant colour to have in, in your palette if you want to mix your own greens or even some really, really pretty oranges. Um, not much I can say more about that. It is what I expected. The Cherry Queen Agridone, I love. It's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. It's right, right up my alley. I love it. And I love the, the delicacy of it. Um, it's very pretty. The Queen Agridone Red is another premium red to have as a mixing red. Um, it is very versatile for mixes. So I'm really glad I have it. I do not know if I'd use it by itself. Possibly, maybe, I'm not sure. Maybe in glazes, maybe um, layering it might work really well. But for mixing, yes, absolutely. The Cobalt Sea Blue, this, it looks like a piece of sea glass. I, to me it does, and I love it. I absolutely love it. I think I contaminated it a little bit when I was putting my hand on to try and see if it had dried. This is just so pretty. And it is a colour that I don't have. Of course I have PB28, which is Copal Blue, but I don't have this version of it. Uh, I love what uh, Roman Schmoll did with this. I'm very excited to try this. Um, the Ultramarine Intense is less intense when it's dried, which is natural, and it's kind of quieted down. I can see it, it has more of a violet shift now. Um, I will have to compare it to my Zeki um, Blue, my, my Zeki Ultramarine Blue, which I absolutely adore, um, and see um, if, it's, if, it, if it's less warm than that, then I could have this like a separate colour. But anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. Indigo. Indigo, yes, it has become a lot duller. Now it's dried. And here, yes, you can see the Indanthrum blue um, clearly. Um, I didn't get Indanthrum blue. I got this because um, I like indigo. I like um, the colour indigo and I thought if this looks like indigo I'll, I'll you know I'll be using it a lot yes it does um it is quite dull I'm gonna have to see how it reacts on my my other my other papers which um I illustrate on um next I have the burnt sienna monte amiada which has granulated nicely here it's a very middle brown. I'm not quite sure about that. Hmm. I am not sure about that, that burnt sienna. I might have to try different burnt sienna from their, their range. Um, Quinacridone maroon. Much less intense than I expected. It could be the paper because the paper is different. It is not the same uh, kind of paper. Um, but very delicate and pretty. And the sepia is, yes, you can see the separation of the carbon black um, from the PBR7. Um, oh, sorry, not carbon black, bone black. Don't know what I'm saying. The separation from the bone black. Um, and yeah, you can see that there's little dots of black here, but that could also be the paper. So I'm going to wait and try it out on my regular illustration paper. I am really excited. I am, you know, I've, I'm going to just finish the video and probably go off for like an hour and play with these for a little before I start more work because I'm in the middle of illustrating uh, this month's patron story for my patrons. But I might have to take a break and try these out um, and try mixing them. I would love to do a mixing video for you using these colours and also a mixing video using the Zeki colours. Um, 
For my next video, please tell me what you would prefer. Would you prefer me to mix my Roman small colours or do a mixing um, video with my Zeki colours? Um, I'll leave that up to you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for sitting here and swatching with me and enjoying these glorious colours and giving me the opportunity to share the love I have of watercolours with you. Um, I think my dog Sweet Pea uh, agrees with that. She <laughs> very enthusiastically is agreeing with that. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your lovely comments, for all the support. Um, the My little awkward bit at the end of my videos as usual if you like this video please like the video because it really it really helps me if you uh, would like to see more from me please subscribe um, because I, I love having you here and it, it, it's beautiful it's a beautiful feeling sharing my love of watercolors with you um, and and hit the notification button please so that you know that I have uploaded a video and always always love your comments so if you have the time and would like to please leave a comment I try and answer them all thank you so so much love you guys take care stay warm because it's quite cold and <laughs> always always stay creative bye bye bye